Good afternoon again. It's much better. My name is Hank McCullough, and I am pleased to be the board chairman of Tin at the Top this year. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us today for this Tin at the Top Upstate Vision Forum. Uh, today's forum is focused on building global fluency in the upstate, and we are especially pleased to be co-hosting this event with Upstate International as part, part of the World Affairs Council initiative. So before we begin our program, and as we normally do at the beginning of each one of these forums, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And I need to fly. What? Oh, yes. Um, 
Since we started this forum series in 2012, Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina has served as our premier sponsor. Uh, we greatly appreciate their continuing support, and it's my pleasure to welcome Greg Scale for a few more remarks on behalf of Blue Cross Blue Shield. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good <laughs> Tag. Bonjour. Buenas tardes. Feliz. Luan. And of course, how do y'all? I am Rex Gale. I am the National General Director of Sales for Blue Cross Blue Shield South Carolina. Many of you know Jim Shu. Jim Shu is normally here. He had another commitment, so he asked me to step in, and I'm very, very pleased to do that for today's event. Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina has a long history supporting Ten at the Top, and we are honored to be the premier sponsor of today's regional forum on building global fluency in the upstate. How appropriate our focus is on global fluency. While we live and work in a geographic upstate community, we interact every day with people and partners from literally every corner of the world working side by side in our community that includes upwards of 500 foreign owned and associated companies in over 34 countries. On a personal note, I have been blessed with extensive global travels from China to the Galapagos Islands, from Europe to Australia. I've eaten Icelandic lobster on the coast outside of Reykjavik, and I've eaten roasted guinea pig in a small village in, on the equator in Ecuador. And one thing I have learned is that global fluency is always going to be accelerated with an open smile, an open heart, and an open mind. And of course, delicious meat. I want to share a few comments about the Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina and our shared vision with Ken at the top to enhance the quality of life in the upstate. As the only South Carolina owned and operated health insurance company, your health is literally our business. We partner with businesses to provide the most competitive and cost-efficient health plans to attract and retain great employees and to make our region a desired place for businesses to operate. We also partner with health care providers to develop the highest quality programs, including patient-centered medical homes for primary care, accountable care organizations for hospital care to ensure the best possible outcomes for you and your loved ones. We work with our members, many of you are in this room, to provide the tools that improve health through coaching, through care management support, and multimodal communication avenues that include helpful and HIPAA compliant text messages that share ideas with you to help members access the highest quality care to save money and to get the most out of their specific benefit programs. As one of South Carolina's largest employers, we provide a safe and healthy work environment for our employees who voted our organization one of the upstate's best places to work. We support healthcare related research and have donated literally tens of millions of dollars to communities and charitable institutions here in the upstate and throughout South Carolina through the Blue Cross Blue Shield through the Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation. And finally, yes, like you, we have to have a global mindset and global fluency. Through our affiliate, GeoBlue, our global network of physicians and healthcare providers offers businesses and their employees and families with the most comprehensive global travel and health insurance plans for employees and expatriates who need access to care and language appropriate providers anywhere that they are in the world. We are honored to support the work of Ten at the Top, and I personally look forward to today's forum. I'd like to turn the stage back over to you. Thank you. I would also like to thank Blue Cross Blue Shield not only for their support of today's event, but their overall support of the organization. So another hand, a round of applause. 
another upstate organization that's been a long-standing Tim at the Top partner is GSA Business Report. I'm pleased to welcome Rick, Rick Jenkins to the stage, and he is the publisher of GSA Business. And Rick, if you'd like to make a few comments, thank you very much. I will make a few comments. <laughs> publisher of GSA Business Report. And we are, of course, the business publication of note here in the upstate. We have been for the past two decades. And I think most of you, not all of you, but I think most of you know how we work. We mail out a print journal uh, to business executives like yourself every couple of weeks. We have business news updates that come to your inbox in the mornings and in the afternoons. Our website, gsabusiness.com, is updated with business news all throughout the day. We have our own business networking events, and we, of course, publish our supplements called Book of List and Market Facts and the Newspapers uh, every year. And uh, we're very proud to provide that information to you guys uh, on a daily basis. And we're also proud to be able to work with the good folks here at Ten at the Top. You know, Ten at the Top's mission is really simple, and uh, it all boils down to something that is, can be said in a sentence, basically. And that is that <coughs> Ten at the Top creates partnerships with people like you and with companies like the ones that, uh, uh, that you all are a part of. And uh, they use those partnerships to collaborate and make this place, the upstate of South Carolina, the place we call home, a better place to work and a better place to live. And they do a fabulous job of that, uh, as evidenced by a recent regional summit. When was that regional summit? September? September, I don't know if you guys were there, but they had a lot of collaborators in that room that day, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands. 900 people will round up to a thousand. Thousand people in that room uh, doing a lot of good stuff, just like, albeit a smaller group today, but doing a bunch of good stuff. And so, Dean, thank you so much for allowing me to listen to report to play some small part in today's event. And I thank you. Let's get on with the show. It is now my pleasure to turn the program over to our Executive Director, Dean Ebel. Thank you, Hank, and, and let me again welcome you. I guess I don't have to give a presentation because Rick summed it up in one <coughs> sentence, uh, but I'm going to, you know, I got some slides anyway. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, as, as we said, we started this series about six years ago to talk about how we, we can be working on and, and issues that are impacting our community across the upstate. But the history of Ten at the Top dates back actually now about 12 or 13 years. And some of you in the room were part of the group that said we need to be purposeful on collaborating across sectors, across communities, not just on specific issues like uh, economic development, the Upstate Alliance, which does a great job of marketing externally to the region or uh, the environment. Upstate Forever, the work they do, or other groups that are more simply focused. We want to create a culture where collaboration, partnerships, working together is part of what we do all the time. It becomes part of the fabric of the Upstate. And so the group that started that conversation more than a decade ago uh, led eventually to what now has become Ten at the Top. And we've been here in our uh, current form for uh, really about eight years now. Time does fly. And it is about how can we, how can we work collaboratively across sectors, across communities, because we are one upstate, and we are stronger when we work together, and when we're, we are understanding that there are components of issues that need to be addressed individually, but there are also components that we can work on collaboratively. And so, all the words up here about our organization, that's really what it's all about. And we focus, as many of you know, around uh, the sharing of ideas, around identifying gaps that exist in the region increasing efficiency, and creating cross-regional networks and um, cross-jurisdictional solutions and opportunities as a region. And we focus specifically around five, what we call our driver areas, community vibrancy, economic and entrepreneurial vitality, um, human potential, natural beauty and resources, and sustainable growth. And a lot of what we do is things exactly like this. We create opportunities to connect the region through community outreach. We have events. 
we do forums, we do uh, workshops, we have task forces, and the idea is um, how can we ensure that collectively we know who's working on issues around the region and then connect those folks through um, purposeful uh, connections and then also through uh, building relationships and trust. And so uh, one of the things we do is we kind of uh, keep track of our engagements. And since we started uh, in 2010, uh, we've had two, 633 programs, that, uh, engagements with over 30, almost 31,000. After today, it'll cross the 31,000 participant threshold. And I know some of you have been part of that since the very beginning. I'm so excited to see a lot of new faces um, today, your first time. Hopefully, it will not be your last. Uh, engage with us. But basically our role in the upstate is to connect regional stakeholders to build collective capacity around key upstate issues. And one of the ways we have done that since 2012 is through this forum series. Today is the first of four that we will have this year. We will be back here in this room on the 25th of May in less than a month to unveil the um, Shaping Our Future analysis uh, that has been something we've been working on with Upstate Forever and the Raleigh Institute at Furman and others for about a year uh, that looks at the impacts of growth in the Upstate region as we continue to grow and add another 350,000 new residents between now and 2040. So I encourage you to come back for that one. Uh, in September, we're going to look at, at culture counts the role of arts and culture in the upstate. We're creating, Tiffany Tate, who is our assistant director, you met her as uh, you came in this, this afternoon, has been leading the way to create regional inventories on a number of different issues uh, in areas in the upstate. We have an um, inventory of all the organizations working around senior issues, around child well-being. We're creating one uh, on outdoor recreational activities. And then the last one we're doing, or, or at least the, the one that we're in the process of right now, is on arts and culture venues and organizations in the upstate. It started with um, Jennifer Evans in Spartanburg. Uh, they did one and said, we should do this regionally. And we think the impact of arts and culture in the region is huge, and that will be our September event. And then in November, we will have our annual Celebrating Successes event. This year is going to be a luncheon for the first time, so I hope you will plan on coming to that. So to get us started today, uh, I borrowed this slide from the Upstate Alliance um, that I, I think is really great. And they're all very small, the, the uh, little flags, so you can't necessarily see them. But it gives you an indication of all of the international investment, more than 450, 462 is what they count there, uh, from 34 countries, uh, companies that are here in the upstate that are a critical part of our economy. So as we looked at starting this year's series and what we could work on and do, talked with, with Tracy at the International Center, uh, they were starting their World Affairs Council program, and it just seemed like a great opportunity to really galvanize and talk about the importance of, of uh, the global economy, but also that we as a community, we must be doing something right to have more than 450 international businesses, but we have to always be purposeful of making sure that we are globally fluent, so businesses want to continue to come here, and the people who come with them feel welcome in our region, welcome in our community to come up important part of the upstate. So we're very excited that this is a topic that we could address today. And um, I think you're going to uh, have a wonderful program. We, we appreciate Brad and Patrick coming from uh, Columbus to, to be with us and appreciate our panelists as well. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Tracy, uh, Tracy Fries with, with uh, Upstate International, who is going to introduce our speaker and then uh, set up the panel discussion. So again, thank you all so much for being with us. <laughs> 